chapter 1, verse 6. Here beginneth the reading of God's holy word. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. The word of the Lord for the people of God, you can take your seat. So on this Super Senior Sunday 2019, I want to minister from the sermon topic, the value of age. The value of age. We live in a time when people value different things. Now let me say that while all things have a value, I am speaking to what is valued most, what is placed above other things. Things are valued, houses, cars, clothes, bank accounts. Another thing that is highly valued during this age is a voice. You see, you can have no house, little money, an old vehicle, and yet a voice that can be heard. <laughs> I would dare say that a voice has become one of the highest, if not the highest, commodity there is. Now what adds to the proliferation of a voice is the stage setup or the environment where the voice can be heard and how it can be amplified. All you need is a Facebook page, a Twitter account, an Instagram account, and your voice, which otherwise would not have been heard, is now heard far and wide. Jesus, power of a voice. Lord have mercy, watch what you say because of the power of a voice. Mm -hmm. Sadly, this avenue of voice amplification gives weight to many who really make no sense and have no common sense. Interestingly enough, our seniors are less present on social media, and so much of the true experience and historic value of their voice is being cast to the side. Instead of hearing the foundational voice of a senior, we hear the fickle voice of a younger person. I'm going to take my time here. See, that senior's learned to stand. They said, <laughs> See, I tell you, come how high water or no water, I'm standing on the word of God. Some of these young people, I'm not, I feel like the church. I'm not, 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 a conference saying somebody international, they get excited. Out there, out there, out there, out there. All right, seaman, let's carry on. Instead of hearing the seasoned voice of a senior, we hear the sensational voice of a youth. Instead of hearing the measured, that's what you say, the measured voice of a senior, we hear the multiplicity of the voices of the youth. Instead of hearing the settled voice of a senior, we hear the searching voice of the younger people. I know if this is the one for me. I never I like anyone. I never change my mind. I know I'm gonna listen to it. I get mm-hmm. 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 Now, I am not against hearing the voices of all, not at all. Yet I would much rather trust the experiences of those who have lived a little longer and learned a little bit more. Come on now, I've been there. Done that with regret. <laughs> Got the t-shirt, sunglasses, flip-flops, beach hat. Mm. On it, done it, done it, on it, on it. Well, <laughs> this is what we shall do today as we visit with this elderly couple. We shall understand the value of their age as it pertains to God being able to use them. So let's do so as we look at the following three points. Point number one, full but empty. Full but empty. Point number two, fruitless but executed. Fruitless but executed. God, that's right there on the top. Point three, 
Bear, but expectancy. Bear, but expectancy. So let's deal with it. Point number one, full, but empty. Let me say here, let me say this, God needs you empty. God, God, God needs me empty, Lord of mercy. I got to empty myself every day, yo. Because I just happen to be old enough, but young enough. So I'm old enough to have a lot of experience, but I'm young enough to be on social media. So I got to empty myself. See, I'm, I'm telling you like it is. Sometimes I have to hide, hide a whole thread. Just hide it so you don't see it. Because semen, if you see it, you want to say something. You know, you're like, if you see something, say something. But the Holy Ghost say, mm, no, 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 no. Back away, semen, back away. Mm, Got to be full but empty. All right. God uses those who are ready, watch it, to be filled with his purpose. See, see, if you're full of you, your opinion, your right, what you think is right, God can't use you. You have to empty you and trust the God in you. That when he fills you, then that everything that you say and do will be of God, God approved. Yes. Now, 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 a songwriter said this, that more of you, more of you, I've had it all, but what I need is more of you, of things. I've had my fill, yet I hunger still, empty and bare. Lord, hear my prayer for more of you. This is where we're at. Look at verse 5. There were in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abiah, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron. Her name was Elizabeth. What was this couple full of? Well, let's take a look. Let's take a look at what they're full of. <laughs> Plenty of years, more years than you think. More. More years than you think, yo. Watch this, watch this, watch this. This couple, I will call them equally yoked, first of all. They came, hear me, and learn the lesson. They came from similar backgrounds, and so you have to know that the understanding they have with regards to the sanctity of God was the same. And no struggle right there. He was from the the lineage of Abiah. She was from the lineage of Aaron. Now, what is significant about this? <laughs> this got me. You, oh, the, the more you study, the more you learn. So I got something new for you, because it's new for me. Watch this. Abiah was the eighth, the eighth of 24 orders of priests. He could have been one, could have been two, could have been 21, could have been 22, but he's eight. Sesame Street taught me to do that. Yeah. Hey, you got it. I must choose a man from the right tribe. You know, you got people who think that, hey, every church is the same. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, people like that, Deacon, every church is the same. It don't matter which one. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Just like it matters which tribe. Jesus didn't come from every tribe, but he came from a particular tribe. You know, it, it all depends on what work you're going to do, what work you're called to do. This man, Zacharias, was from the tribe, the eighth tribe of Abiah, eight meaning new beginnings. So no matter how many years he had lived, no matter how many times he had served in whatever capacity in the temple, this time God needed to use him at this time because it was going to be a new beginning. Can I encourage a senior here? You may be way up in years, but can I tell you, you can still be from the eighth tribe. That God can still use your life. <laughs> that you can present a new beginning to the people. 
that it's not about your literal age. It's about the age that God has called you to. So he was from the eighth tribe. And God is just about to use this fool but empty priest to begin something new. What? No, no, no. Let me explain. The difference between the two is that his immediate order is mentioned. They were both from the line of Aaron. Aaron is right up the top. They're both under there. Jesus, help me, Holy Ghost. But I need to mention that Zacharias is from Abiah. I need that, because I made man in the beginning, and he covers the female. It's not about which particular tribe she is from, but it is about what particular tribe he is from. Catch this, church. If we can get the man of God, not just to be in a church, but to be in a particular church, a particular tribe, then they will now walk in the fullness of who God has called them to be. And not just any old church will do. Not just any old tribe will do. What is your purpose? What is your purpose? Now, now watch this. <laughs> like I said, he was from the order of Abiah. Order of Abiah. And this name means my father is Yah. Holy Ghost, just teach me right here. It didn't say, Sister Tammy, Father Smith, it didn't say, my father is Abraham. I'm going to help somebody. It didn't say, my father is Abraham, Isaac, or Jacob. Mm -mm. Even as I operate in the temple, my father is God. What a focus, huh? Named, focus, right. All right. Now, they were both from Aaron. Aaron meaning light bringer. <laughs> Re always remember God said in the beginning, let there be light. So when he is about to introduce someone new, he provides a spotlight. And this time the spotlight is on Zacharias and Elizabeth. Now in study, I found out this. Aaron, the original priest, his wife was named Elizabeth. Oh. <laughs> For the original move of God, there's Aaron and Elizabeth. For the new move of God, there is Zacharias from the tribe of uh, Abiah under Aaron, whose wife is named Elizabeth. So it does matter who you hook up with. Elizabeth is needed. Without Elizabeth, we're not going to get John the Baptist. And we need John the Baptist to announce somebody. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's carry on. Watch this, watch this. God was about to use two persons who were from faithful priesthood, two faithful seniors, two faithful persons who had been bringing light to the people when it was their turn for duty. That's another thing. It was so many priests and enough high priests, this is going to blow you away, that they said that only once in a lifetime <laughs> would the priest be able to go in to the Holy of Holies as the high priest. Once in a lifetime. The timing of God. See, because when, when I think of time in Deacon Sumner, I just didn't think of this. I think about the timing that Zachariah's parents had him. And their parents had him. So that we could get to where we are today. Some of you think you just appeared because mom and daddy wanted you. No, the kingdom wanted you. When you finally understand that the kingdom wanted you on the earth, he needed you to be an elder today. Remember about what you went through, what you wanted. He needed you to be an elder, needed you to be in the kingdom. That takes on significance. Yeah. No, time. Yeah. It's bigger than what I can think. Yeah. Yet on this day, watch it now. God was about to use them to bring tidings of a light that would need no help in upkeep or help in rituals. They, in their normal duty, mama, they would always be speaking about the light, the light to come, 
the light of the history of the Jewish people. They had to do that all of the time. But there was about to appear on the earth and a light that would not need to be upkept. And Jesus don't need no upkeep. Jesus ain't no ritual. Oh, come on up in here. Oh, today, 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 so many go into the church, and it's a ritual. It's what we do. You know, every week we do this. Every week we go here, and it, it has no meaning. It has no depth. But I tell you what, when Jesus Christ has entered into your life, when he is your king, when he is your Lord, when he is your savior, when he is your healer, and you step into the house, it means something. It means something so wonderful. This ain't normal. No Sunday's normal up in here. No Sunday's the same. I know what's gonna take place on a Sunday at Shekinah. Huh? Can't, can't, can't write it out. Can't script it out. You know, my plan was to be finished, but nah. But the script, draw any script when the Holy Ghost enters in. Holy Ghost gonna have his way. Holy Ghost gonna do what he wants to do in the kingdom. Let me ask this question. Why can God use these super seniors? About six. And they were both righteous before God walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. Now, now pause right here, Seema. Pause right here. Teach it right here. Maybe you should teach it a lot more. Hold on. They were both righteous. Blameless. This means they were in right standing in front of the people. Let me take it somewhere else. This means that as the people looked at Zacharias and looked at Elizabeth, they said, oh, wow, they're really, they're like for real um, Jewish people, for real of uh, the tribes of Israel. Those people are just like God. Let, let me say it this way. You can actually judge. Forget all those lying spirits that take the scripture out of context. The Bible is replete with examples of mark them, separate ye from them. By their fruits you shall know them. Don't you listen to jack leg preachers, half come see whatever, pastors? You better read the word. You have to look at the person. You got to be able to look at your pastor and know that she ain't got a bottle of rum in some cabinet in the back of the kitchen. Oh, come on up in here. You got to be able to look at your pastor and know that she is betrothed, engaged, married to, to one man forever on this earth, Kent Peter Seaman. You got to be able to look and say, I can trust her because she is righteous before God. Stop falling for that. Bible says you shouldn't judge. And the people saying it don't even believe in the Bible or God. And guess what? I don't compromise the Bible for myself, my family, or anyone. I guess that's the issue. Some of them got to compromise because their child's going a certain way. Listen, my child goes a certain way. I'm going to preach the word to bring them back in the way. Hey, I want them to make it to heaven. I want them to hear well done. I want them to glorify God. I got to preach the word in season, out of season, when they want to hear it, when they don't want to hear it, preach the word. Straight line. Straight at the wicked. Straight down, Santa stops. What we call them? Santa stumps. Put it right on them. Say, well, you want an LPW for that? Go for what? what? Hmm? So, so we, we've got to get that, church. You're only going to hear well done. Because you don't hear well done for what you've done in heaven. You hear well done for what you've been doing on earth. We carry on. I'll, I'll keep on teaching that another way. <laughs> so they, these two, they were righteous. It was God first. It was honoring God in all that they did before they did anything else. It was honoring God while they had personal hopes and dreams that had not become a reality. Get that? How? He, how 
God, why are you using this too? They haven't even proved they can have children. It was, for them, it was this, watch it. I will yet praise it. He, huh? God, you know, I can imagine Elizabeth in her earlier years. God, she was pregnant. Got hopes and dreams. Might have missed a cycle or two. Started setting up the baby room, huh? Huh? But here comes the menstrual another month later. Yet will I praise him. Don't have exactly what I want. Things aren't going like how I pictured them. I pictured things going a certain way for my whole family all the time. And what? So it didn't. So it doesn't. Yet will I. Why do I praise him? Because he answers on his way. This I know. Jesus said it. I believe it. And it's so. My heavenly father, he knows my knees before I pray. I can rest. Lord, have mercy. Huh? Huh? Everybody do. I can. Oh, come on, church. While you're going through, I can. While you don't feel like it, I can. Oh, Lord. Huh? Huh? Hey! Glory. I feel God in this place. I will yet praise. Verse 7, and they had no child, which was considered a curse, by the way. In the church, considered a curse. Come on. In the church, so shouldn't these be working out for you? Oh, you must be cursed. <laughs> huh? And they had no child because that Elizabeth was barren, and they both we're now well stricken in years. Well, well stricken. Well stricken means it's going to take something supernatural to undo that well. To undo that well. Did you get that? Shh, I ain't going to say nothing else. In other words, they were full but empty. They were full of who God needed them to be, but they were empty of a legacy to pass on this legacy to and through a child. You know, that, that tells me that they were on point. These two, I never, I mean, it took me a while. I mean, I didn't fight and fuss with it, but in my earlier years, I was like, but God, I'm doing everything you tell me to do. I'm living right. This is me as a teen, all right? I have no sex. <sighs> Read my Bible. I'm praying. Oh, working hard at it. I'm respecting people that don't even like me. Even when they reject me in the church, I, I still come and serve you. And they treat my, my mama terrible in the church. Because <sighs> I see her worshiping, I say, oh, well, must be something about her God. I got to hang on. How is it when you're doing everything right, but you still don't have what you want? Got to learn to wait on God. Matter of fact, you have to learn and understand God didn't do it to you. Understand when people do things, no matter what people do, you stay on target. That's what I want. You stay on point. You have no right to say, look, I can just operate outside of the will of God. Forget that being on target. I don't do nothing for you anyway. I might just live like the world. Forget this. Oh, God. That's, that's the issue. Y'all you following me? The issue is that we get frustrated, and now we think we can do all sorts of things outside of the will of God, outside of the target. No. God is the same, so you have to remain the same. This couple, they were on point, bullseye. And let me tell you, 
It is when you are hitting the bullseye that God notices you. I didn't say you were happy. <laughs> when you do God's will and God knows you're so serious about him that he now ushers you into first place. God knows you're serious about him that you have that stick to itness. Yes. Yeah, you got some Christians are like super glue. Some Christians are like cheap tape. But we got to have super glued Christians. They know what, no matter what, I will stay close to God and in the will of God. When God, listen, when God sees you empty, he sees your empty places, but sees that you're doing his full will or work to the kingdom, God is about to use you for his glory. You, you got to do both. You got to be, not my will, nevertheless, we've been talking about this. God, that's it. I'm available to you. I'm empty. That's when you are hitting the bullseye and God notices you. Some of you, God ain't going to notice you because you just won't go for the bullseye. You got you to play around with the fringes. You got to taste a bit of what the world has. You got you know, to be some sort of like, in a, like you, know, you need to be close enough to get a couple of points, but somewhere far enough where you ain't getting any. Takes me to point two, fruitless but executing. Watch this. Fruitless but executing. The Bible tells us that this priest executed his duty. Jesus. Verse 8, and it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, it was his turn. <laughs> executed comes from the Greek word hirateo. Hirateo, meaning discharge the office of a priest to be busied in sacred duties. That's another thing. Some of you busy complaining because you're not busy doing things. I, I ain't got no time to complain. I'm, I'm so, so busy. I might complain. I have to say, bye, complain. I've got something else to do. <laughs> well, you, you, have, you have to ask yourself, what am I doing in the kingdom that God would even say, bullseye? What, what am I doing when it comes to the hierarchy of church? What am I doing when it comes to how church is operating. What am I doing when it comes to teamwork? Where, where am I on the team? Where am I in the team? Hmm. So, so as for this couple, this tells me that we are dealing with a focused senior. A focused. Zacharias. He, he knows what he has been born and called to do. Born and called. Not only born in the family lineage of Aaron, the high priest, but understood that it was his divine calling, and so he did his duty with excellence. See, it's not, I show up. <laughs> it's, no, 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 what? I'm a member of Shekinah, hey. hey. Cutting edge global ministry, hey. It would be appalling for me to do it in any other fashion than a fashion of excellence, huh? It, what, pastor? I mean, go out first, let's say that, before I get people in an uproar. Pastor would not be happy unless it's done with excellence to the king of kings and the lord of lords. Come on. That's the focus. He was righteous. He did it with excellence. He was a righteous servant of God. And you know what I also thought about? How God made sure to connect this man with the right help me. For what they, for what they were going to do, she needed to understand. She did, he did not need a wife saying, yeah, church again. <laughs> Aren't you, Rhonda? How many years she been going? Y'all gave to him? Did God give us a child? Chamana said. Well, God, see, because females, like I'm not a female. Females can be fickle, boy. Yes, emotional, is. right? So God sets up this female, Kathy, where she comes from the tribe of Aaron. Holy Ghost filled. Fire baptized. Well, I don't know if they had the Holy Ghost. Not yet, yet, not yet. Um, loves the Lord. Loves the church. And loves that our husband loves the church. What? God had to get that woman at that place. 
for what was about to take place. You need me go to Hammers and, and Lizzie talk about how long you spent in church today, Zach. God had to have them on one accord. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> so he connects this man with the right help me. That is someone who would understand his calling and his passion. The elder has to understand. First, he didn't understand. 1998, he said, oh, no, 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 no. Remember, we were by the piano? Uh-huh, in the old house? I said, I think God has called me to pastor. You looked at me and said, oh, no, 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 no. Uh-huh, he did. I'm a, uh, it's the truth, ain't it? And he's smiling, uh -huh. But let me tell you what God did. I ain't going to go into details. But while I was off the island, while I was preaching elsewhere on the island, God put a situation on him, soaked him with the Holy Ghost. So that around 2006, he said, I think they're going to need somebody to pastor him. Hey, hey. So I got approval. Help me. Look, look. I, I got approval from the man who covered me. Go and cover God's people. Hi, y'all, no bullshit. Huh? You want to know, you want to know the significance of him? What? When he said that, I said, Lord, miracle signs and wonders. Let's go, boys. It was on after that. It was on after that. That's right. That's right. So if you ever want to know what place he holds and where we are today, foundational. Because God made sure that I was connected to the right person who gave me permission as a husband that his wife could operate freely in the position of being a pastor. Oh, church. No small thing. No small. Because imagine if I said, the 98, now we're from 98, we're going to 2006. Eight years later. 98? Eight years later. New beginnings. Beginnings. Imagine if I went to him and said, oh, no, 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 no. And I said, well, I know God has called me. The people, the people out there wondering, they're calling themselves the gathering. You got to call them more than the gathering. We'd be arguing at home. And be like, well, I don't want it. I don't want it. I'd be like, but God said. He said, well, God ain't told me. Can you imagine? So God had to suck him first. And no, I was ready. Show me the way. Hey, hey, hey. I'm talking about, that's a bit of your history, right? I'm talking about when you're operating in the will of God. And look, because that man said yes, you, ooh, because he said yes, look at what we are today. What? 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 <laughs> Listen, when you can be righteous and execute your duty while not having a dream, a personal dream come true, you're hitting the target. Let me bring it up to speed. When you can serve God, no matter what, you're hitting the target. When you can serve, execute your duty while things did not turn out for you how you thought they would, you're hitting the target. When all is not well or perfect in your life, but you still execute your office, your position, your leadership, your worship towards God, you are hitting the target. Yeah. And folks, when you execute in excellence, God is about to use your light for his glory. That's what it's about to do, verse 8. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course. Don't miss, and it came to pass. Hey, boy, don't you wish they would just say it six months later? You know, even six years later. Give me a hope. Let me tell you something. This week, this week, there's going to be a phrase. And it shall come to pass. I mean, I don't know when, but it shall come to pass. Just, just rest in that. Hmm? I, I want to put a time limit, but it shall come to pass. I want to put a deadline on it, but it shall come to pass. I want to say, that said the Lord as far as time is concerned, but really, it shall come to pass. Ain't no sense even getting deep. It's just, just going to happen. In other words, God is about to do for you, watch this, while you are doing for him. Because <laughs> it said, it said, said. <laughs> and it came to pass that while he executed, 
If you want God to meet your need, you have to be executing the duty, whether you have what you want or not. He comes while you're doing the work. Don't let him catch you with your work undone. You will lose your starry crown. Better get your work done. God is about to meet your need while you are doing his will. Work for God, and God will work for you. Matthew 6, 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. What I did? What? And his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. It's the righteousness. Go back to that judging. You got to be righteous. Judging. Don't listen to this foolishness. You have to judge righteously. You cannot judge unrighteously. It is the desiring to be in right standing with God. It is the preferring to be out of step with humanity, but in lock and step with God. That's, that's what you got to make that preference. Because then your hour will come. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's all a matter of time. You know how God does things in time. I just know he does it. Today I've got a 29-year-old, a 26-year-old, and an 18-year-old. He did it. He did that. I was crying. In secret, you know, because I always came to church worshiping. I like a good dance. I got that from my mama. Um, so while I was home crying, you know, looking at the basal body chart, temperature's good enough, that's the time there, no, no pregnancy. Huh? We'll miss a cycle her, thought it was it. God, I'm doing your will. I'm doing everything. I'm teaching on the youth board, doing this, doing that, doing everything. Whatever the, my bishop, my pastor said to do, I did it with excellence to please him. And in so doing, please, I knew I was pleasing God anyway. Stand up for this baby, stood up for Shante, stood up for Urshan, stood up for all these babies I stood up for. And I'm just saying, God, like, my name's Maria, like Mary. Like, I married a virgin, like the mother of Jesus. You don't know what I went through. You don't know. This is a young, I'm 21, I'm 22, I'm 23. Going to the doctor, is that a lack of faith? I'm a biology student, so I know this body. Now I'm going to go to the doctor. All right, take this tablet. Measure this. Take this temperature. Take this shot. Take this pill. Still go in church. Clap in faith. No child. Stand up for this baby. Oh, my sister has a baby. Oh, what? What? And she got the same blood I am? See, see, you all don't want to be real. Well, well, how come she's able to? Then I hear a story about an auntie who miscarries. Said, so that's the genetics I'm God? You know, all these type of thoughts. And never miss church. Never miss prayer meeting. The youngest person in prayer meeting. Why? Because I understood. And it shall come to pass. Hmm? By the way, it came to pass when I wasn't taking any pill and wasn't taking any temperature. Ow! Ow! And God has that firstborn baby born on the seventh day of the week. The seventh day of the seventh month. That's the only seventh day I've had right there. To me, that's the timing of God. That you serve God. Hear me? Somebody's going to get it. You serve God in excellence because his excellence never changed while my body was imperfect. And so God, yeah. I'm going to serve you like I've always served you and have faith that my body will catch up with who you are. Yeah. Yeah. Ah! My body will align with who you are. And it happened, and it happened. Let me go back to this couple here. It's all a matter of timing. Time and timing. At this time, the Kairos time of God merges and totally lines up with the Kronos time of man. Verse 9. According to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went 
into the temple of the Lord. Time, his lot. It was his turn. It was his turn. Tell, tell somebody next to you, your turn. <laughs> your turn. <laughs> I'm claiming that. Thank you, God. Your turn, your turn. It was his custom. He, it was the norm. It was what was expected. It was, watch this. It was the same old, same old. <laughs> While you're doing the same old, same old, God's about to come in. Huh? Yeah, yeah, you're doing what you've always done. <laughs> you, oh, I get so excited. Look at that. You're just doing what you knew you were going to do, but you didn't know God was going to step in on your doing what you know what you need. <laughs> do what you normally do. <laughs> and church, while you're doing the norm, God is about to step in with something abnormal. Yeah, it's abnormal. Call me what you want. They call me strange, I have no problem. They call me peculiar, no problem. Call me abnormal, no problem. But let me tell you what, I know that the strange, abnormal, huh, all that is topped off with the essence of who God is, that everything I am, everything I hope for, everything I intend to do is under the shadow of God Almighty himself. And so Zacharias, he he always burnt incense. The duty of this priest was the duty of all the priests who will be on duty. Let me read this. I got this here from the internet. Their duties involved offering the daily and Jewish holy day sacrifices, carbonate in Hebrew, and blessing the people in a ceremony known as the Nisiad Kepayim, raising of the hands, the ceremony of the priestly blessing. Those people were expecting a normal priestly blessing. He burns incense and then he blesses the people. Burn and bless, burn and bless. <laughs> burn the incense, then bless the people. What? Burn and bless. You like that? Burn and bless. Hmm? Let me tell you what it's like. It's like when you lift up your hands and praise and worship. Burn, baby, burn. Yeah, it's like when you clap your hands. Burn, baby, burn. It's like when you do the holy death. Burn, baby. It's like when you do the war cry. Burn, baby, burn. And then after you burn, God, I bless you. God, I bless your name. There's no one higher than you. There's no one greater than you. God, you're a wonder to our soul. Burn and bless. That's, that's what it's about. In other words, listen, he takes, he takes the ashes from the altar of sacrifice, representing the prayers of the people. And he spreads a portion of them in this place as a means for interceding for the people. So they were praying outside. You got some altars burnt. He takes those ashes from the inner court area, and he brings the prayers of the people into the holy place. He takes the prayers of the people, all these people. Now, he himself, has, he knows he's got to be righteous. If not, they're pulling his dead body out. So he's in right standing. So he, in right, I, I'm going to be the priest, high priest, Zacharias. I am in right standing. I have the right to take your prayers. To the holy place. And in the holy place, I will speak over your prayers a blessing. In other words, I, people, people, all your prayers, okay, because you're sinning every week, so you're coming anyway. All your prayers, Lord, forgive me, hell, man, all that, forgive me. So now, that's why, see, that's why I priest. I ain't going to talk about the great, the Babylon, the mystery Babylon. I ain't going into that. Give it to this one man. Now he intercedes, and he stands as an intercessor. The priest stands at the high priest stands as the intercessor over all the prayers. All right, this is where we are. Okay. 
He's interceding for the people. Exodus 30, 34. Then the Lord said, said to Moses, you know, Moses, Moses. Take, listen people, take fragrant spices, gum, resin, anacha, galbanum, and pure frankincense, and in all equal parts, equal parts, equal parts. When I thought of this, I thought that you and I should offer up a fragrance to God of equal parts too. Of four equal parts, really. We should offer up our hands, our hearts, our voices, and our lives. So just like the Jewish people had to have that their prayers were offered up in this mixture, then we, Lord of mercy, it's, it's okay if we're different, if we're a mixture of people. But when we offer up our prayers and our praises and our voices and our hearts together, they go up as a sweet-smelling savor. That is, listen, each and every time we enter into this house, we do so in order that God will receive our, what? He'll receive our fragrance, the fragrance of our praise. You know, what type of aroma did he get today? What type of fragrance, you know, well, What's he sniff, sniff, test? What's he sniff, test? He sniff, test. That's what we're going to call it. He sniff, test. Hmm? What will happen when he sniffed? When he sniffed you out? Ow! Shut up, y'all, don't go kid. Hmm? 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. We should offer up our hands, our hearts, our voices, our lives. Psalms 4 and 5. Offer, listen to the psalmist, offer the sacrifices of righteousness. And put your trust in the Lord. Psalms 51 and 19. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness. See? Ain't just any old thing. You know, so come in here and give, I, this is how I feel today. You really? With the sacrifices of righteousness, with burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings, then shall they offer bullocks upon thine altar. Matthew 9 and 13. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice, for I am not come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. God loves the smell of a repentant sinner. What? That's like got to be one of his favorite. Outside of a worshiping saint, that's probably one of his favorite fragrances, a repentant sinner. Somebody that actually says, you know what? Your Bible says I shouldn't do it. God forgive me for doing that. Not that stinking, rotten smell of some pastors. Oh, no, let it go. God loves all. Carve everything with love. You better, you better preach your whole Bible. We've got some nonsense happening in Bermuda and around the world. God has a standard. And I'm speaking to it because I'm reading it and I'm hearing it. And it's a false gospel. And it's a gospel that's going to allow people to go to hell via the church. Listen to Romans 12 and 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Ha, ha, ha. Holy. Oh, acceptable unto God. Oh, yes. which is your, just be reasonable. Yes. I'm just looking for some people to be reasonable. Yes. How many rational people around here? This man, Zacharias, was a senior in the right place at the right time doing the right thing. Verse 10, and the whole multitude of the people. Look, shh. I have to look at it. Timing, don't forget the timing. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. They're praying without. Follow me. This is the Holy Ghost right here. They're praying without. And there's a sweet smell going on in there. I want my prayers to make it in there. I want the ugliness of what I have to face, the challenges of what I have to face, to become sweet. And the only way that happens is when we give our lives wholly and solely to God. He'll take what you're going through and make it smile better. <laughs> now, though, Zacharias, he was interceding for awaiting people. Ah, he's interceding for awaiting people. It's a whole crowd out there. They were waiting on him to complete his duty while God was about to use him to announce the one who would complete this duty forever. They needed all different types of priests. They certainly needed a, 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 second, a second holy priest just in case this one had been doing something wrong, going to drag out his body, they're going to still need another priest. 
So apparently the human priests are replaceable because pastors will preach wrong. Pastors will go wrong. But I'm so glad that we have a great high priest, Jesus Christ, and he knows how to intercede in perfection, and he shall never be replaced. He is eating what? He is right. Oh, I can't say that yet. No semen. That's my next point. I got, I'm just going to tell you something. It's coming up, dude. It's coming up. <laughs> I'm about to get to it. Point three. <laughs> point three. I'm running, y'all. I'm running. I'm running. Huh? Point three. Fear, but expectancy. Let's go to it. Eleven. And there appeared. Oh, you got to picture it. It's priest. He knows what all the other priests experience. But something's going to happen that's different. Okay. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. Note that God will use you for an intense kingdom work when you are positioned correctly. Uh, this is the Bible, yeah, we're talking about. And he is a priest. And so... The right place is physically in the holy place, the place where God's presence is. See that? That tells me that since we are of a priesthood, a royal priesthood, if we want to be in the right place when we gather at Shekinah, we got to aim to be in the presence of the Lord. It's not the presence of anybody else. It's the presence of God himself. Not only this, watch this. <laughs> he sees a being. Ain't no other priest, no other high priest ever seen a being. You know, but one thing if another priest, high priest, had done his duty, right? He does his duty, and I'm going to be dramatic. He does his duty, and he's praying to God on behalf of the people. He sees, oh, runs outside. Oh, my gosh, I saw something. Never had happened before. Never. There's, there's no prototype. This is something that is totally new because it's number eight. This is totally different, right? Okay. He sees a being standing on the right side of the altar. As I pictured, a, pictured this, this is where I got happy. As I pictured this, I thought of Jesus Christ as the chief intercessor standing on the right hand of God. Huh? <laughs> so I know I get so excited. This picture becomes a picture of what, what what's, what's, What's going to happen in heaven? What's to come? So just, just like the Old Testament is a shadow, this moment here, right at the beginning of Luke, because we've got to get it over and done with, is a shadow of what's to come. It's in the holy place. He's on the right side, and he sees a being on the right side. He's an intercessor, but he sees the intercessor. Uh, okay, all right, okay, okay. So I thought of Jesus Christ as the chief intercessor standing on the right hand of God. Watch this, watch this. Acts 7, 55. But he, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, behold, this is Stephen. Behold, I see the heavens opened <laughs> and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Picture, you got a picture it. Hebrews 8 and 1. Now, the point in which we are saying is this we have such a high priest, one who is seated at the right hand of the throne of the majesty of God. You better think God is seated. Because seated means his, he, he, he ain't come. See, when, when, ooh, shaman, I say, you want to help? I feel like, I feel like, I wish somebody could help me preach right. Zacharias, Zacharias, who I say, Zacharias had to see him standing because Jesus hadn't come yet as a baby. But Stephen saw him sitting because his work is done. When your work is done, you can sit down. When he stands up again, it's when the trump will when the trump will sound. Means I'm coming back. I got another work to do. I gotta come back again 
to get my people. Shamana Seketa. Glory to God. So on this day, I'm a most there. I'm doing good too. I wanted one out. On this day, the senior <laughs> stood as an intercessor as he had never done before. This day was different, verse 12. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. Zacharias was about his normal day. He sees a being on the right side of the altar of the incense and immediately responds as a human. Normal. Fear grips him. <laughs> sees the angel on the right hand side. Fear. Come on, favorite word. How oh, the enemy is using it now. Fear comes from the word phobos. Dread. Terror. I ain't no homophobic. They homophobic. Maria, Maria phobic. Huh? I'm scared. I'm need to work. Look at 13. But the angel, what? 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 But the angel, what? I said, but the angel. I heard you hear it. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias. Watch, watch this. For thy prayer is heard. Wait a minute, wait, hold on. Oh, I, I just got a minute longer. His praying for all the people. But the angel says, thy prayer. <laughs> Decades old prayer. 30, 40, 50 year old prayer. Might be held up, but it's on his way. Huh? While you're praying for others, God will meet your need. Yeah. That's why you don't, take, you don't take a day off. You don't go on strike. You don't do the go slow thing in the kingdom. You keep on working the works. Yeah. I'm on a shade. <laughs> for thy prayer is heard. And thy wife is being very clear. Huh? And thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. <laughs> Note that we quickly then hear or read the word, but <laughs> for we must cancel out that, that fear. You have to cancel out the fear that grips you, but listen to every Christian in here. You ought to reach at least some point where you're like, oh, I don't know if I want to say that. Uh, uh. And then immediately cancel out with, but, but do the will of God anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. You, 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 you cannot move in fear and faith at the same time. You can't. You cannot move in fear and faith. This super senior is told that he is going to be a father. Verse 14. <laughs> I'll tell you, they had closed up shop. Locked it up, put a chain on the front. Put um, chapter 13, it's the chapter 8 or 13, nation. Chapter 13, whatever chapter. Probably had the property for sale. I don't know what he did. Closed up shop. <laughs> 14, and thou shalt have joy and gladness. Now you got, you got joy and gladness. In other words, you're going to have the supernatural joy. Hey, you're going to be happy too. See that? See that? God. In other words, I'm going to give you my joy. Now you be glad about that. Hey! Huh? <laughs> and many are going to rejoice at his birth. But Zacharias, you and Elizabeth are, watch this, are not having this child for you only. But God needs this child to be born now for everyone. My favorite sentence of the day. Watch this. For your John shall announce my Jesus. Oh! Gotta have an extraordinary announcer. You know, cop match coming up. Certain voices, the voice of summer. Certain voices that just means cop match. Right? Even I, a non cricketer. No, it's the voice of summer, that phrase. <laughs> For a copy of this sermon in its entirety, 
please email me at swim at God bless. Blessings, blessings, blessings.